What's up? Today we're gonna be working on our X5 diesel truck. We're gonna be removing the DPF filter along with some other components. I decided to make a tutorial about it. So let's take a look at some of the parts that are needed to complete this project. One of the parts needed for this project is a downpipe. There's a couple different models on the market. I chose this uh, downpipe. This is from a company from Europe. There's few companies that offer it in the US. I chose not to go with them because in the US they cost basically double what they cost in Europe. As in Europe, uh, this modification is much uh, more popular. This pipe is a um, produced by a company called Mimel Performance. As you could tell, it's, it's a nice piece of uh, material. It's made uh, fully from 304 stainless steel. You could, the easiest way to test that is that the magnet sticks. It does not, that means it's full stainless steel. And uh, it's, uh, the welds are nice, nicely uh, finished. This is a three inch uh, pipe and uh, you could configure it any way you like, uh, which was a nice thing. Um, originally they offer it with the uh, regular connection to the original center section, which is uh, about two and three quarter inch uh, connection. I chose to have this uh, connection be full three inch because I'm, I'm gonna be uh, making a three inch midsection uh, for, this, uh, for this project. So I wanted to have nice and uh, and uh and one size pipe going all the way to the, to the back which i'm going to show you later as we get to the install like i mentioned before i mean uh, th i got this pipe for about 350 dollars in the us uh, there's a couple companies that offer it and it's not even made from full stainless steel and it's like 700 dollars. so this is basically half of the price which is nice and uh, as, as you could tell it's excellent finish so um, I'm very excited to uh, to put this on and see how the uh, fitment is. And I'm gonna put a link in the description if anyone is interested in, in this pipe. So you could save some money uh, if you're doing this project. So uh, first thing first, we're gonna be uh, we have to get the X5 into our garage, put it on on jack stands. Uh, have to raise it quite a bit, and we'll take it from there. Five in our little tiny garage. I lifted it on on the jack stands. So uh, let me just show you what uh, what exactly how, which points I used. And uh, I'm gonna close the door, put some fire in our little stove. So let's take a look. You know you gotta get creative if you work in a small garage like this. But anything is possible. You know where there's a will, there's a way. They say right. So I place the Jacksons right there, the lifting point right here. Uh, there's a beam that goes across here. As you could see some, the, the shield is, is bolted to it. You could lift it by the center point right there and you could rest it on your Jacksons. And the real wheels, I actually put some uh, flat, small ramps I made. Um, I drove onto the re rear wheels onto them because you want the rear of the of the car be in uh, higher as well because you're going to be working in the middle section as well over there so you want to have some ample room so with that being said next thing to do is take off all these under panels i could just move this because it's not needed so we have to remove all these the, the shields and then we'll take it from there So I took off the bottom uh, the splash guards. Let's take a look. So everything is uncovered. Let's see. I could show you exactly what needs to be removed. So uh, as you see right here, this is the uh, the exhaust pipe going back. So actually, this is the ending of the downpipe of the DPF. 
right here you could see right there it's kind of hard to tell it's covered real well but it's right above that uh, engine mount and uh, it ends right here so we have to take this clamp off also we're gonna be removing the SCR which is this whole pipe along with that big box over there we're just gonna cut it right in the back over there which I'm gonna show you momentarily so what uh, what we need to do now is in order for the DPF to come out we actually need to take loosen or take this uh, motor mount arm out because it will not clear this is a big can which is uh it's right there which you will not clear if you don't take that out so we have to support the engine uh lift it a little bit we have to loosen the subframe and drop it down about two inches um on this side you don't need to take everything out by the manual they tell you to you have to drop the whole differential but that would take way too long so um the the easy the easier way to do it is to drop this to to loosen this side of the of the subframe about to the point where it could be dropped about two inches down and lift the engine a little bit that creates enough room for the, the DPF to slide through this passage over there. So uh, you could there's actually two ways to uh, you could either. Uh, lift lift the engine from here or you could get a ho engine hoist and uh, and uh, and and lift it from the top whichever way is more convenient for you let's start unbolting all this stuff all the sensors all this stuff has to come out because uh, we don't need all that stuff anymore there's the uh, DPF from the top of the engine barely see it but you could clearly see the um, the engine mount which that has to be loosened uh, and like I mentioned you could if you have a hoist engine hoist you could lift the engine by this hook over here or you could uh, if you have a jack you could lift it from the bottom whichever e way is easier for for your particular situation so yeah so let's uh, continue working and start removing some of the sensors so I remove the uh um that's called the df the injector the sensor here now i'm working on the the mount there's a bolt on top which is very hard to get to but i found a little trick how you could easily undo that uh, that bolt that bolt out sticking out over there i already undid it so what you need is it's an 18 millimeter socket and then it has, it has to have a swivel at the end and a couple extensions long one and short one and you could sneak it right through here let me see if i could do this with the, holding the camera you could sneak it right right through here right through there like that so you also your wrench is sticking out over here and you can undo it fairly easy if you have the right extension and a swivel arm you'll be all right so uh, let me continue on bolting this and uh we'll soon have to raise their engine to release the pressure of the uh of the mount um before uh we take the uh, engine mount out uh, we need to take care of the, um, the mid section so uh that's what i'm gonna do now so you gotta take this off, I already loosened this clamp over here. And now, since I'm gonna be removing, I'm gonna put a piece of straight pipe over here with a bend, like, like you see that over here. And uh, it's gonna end right about here. So I'm gonna uh, mark it, and I have to just cut it in this place. So that way I could remove this whole SCR section along with with this and the uh, the nozzle right here, so um, I'm gonna mark it up now, and uh, we'll begin cutting. Yeah. 
and she's out all right finally after some struggle to cut it i forgot one of the sensors had to loosen it while the, the section was already cut that you probably saw in the time lapse but we have this out of the way now which gave us much needed room to take out the dpf you could see right there you could uh, have a better view of it so now what we need to do is loosen the the subframe bolts and we're gonna drop the subframe about uh, about two inches about let's see yeah about two inches uh while we're gonna lift the support the engine in the middle that way we could take out the motor mount let, let me get the, the jack and uh, start working on that and uh there she is so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fabricate a piece of straight pipe with a bend here and a bend there and connect it right up but that's gonna be after we actually take the dpf out and have everything else sorted out so um you're gonna put this to the side this is quite heavy too it's probably more like seems like 20 20 25 pounds at least so we'll have some weight savings on our suv not that we need any but uh, hey always welcome let me get under the car and um I'm gonna start taking the dpf hangers apart and then i'm gonna lift the engine and remove the uh the arm now that we have everything removed and pretty much the dpf is loose as you could tell it's moving around there this there's this bracket over there which i didn't film taking off because it's just just impossible it's bolted like this with the two bolts to the uh, engine block and two bolts to the dpf i don't know if you could see over there uh holding it once you remove that and loosen the v-clamp up front which uh, it's too dark you can't see you basically are able to move around so now comes the fun part we have to loosen the subframe so i'm gonna loosen bolts three bolts on this side so they're kind of like a couple turns out and basically drop this side, take this ball out all the way and the other two just loosen. So they may be holding on a quarter of an inch uh, by threads. So the uh, subframe does not drop on you, on your, on yourself or on myself for that matter. Yeah, because this is pretty heavy and we have to uh, support the engine with a jack like you could support it right here that's a good spot so you could loosen this bottom this top half of the of the motor arm mount in order for provide uh ample space to squeeze the the dpf through this passage over here it's still going to be very tight but um that's the only way of doing it let's see how it goes and uh also, I uh, unbolted all the uh, the sensors, the, the temperature sensors on top, and the uh, what's the other sensor? The NOx sensor, I believe. All right, let me set this up so we could um, loosen up the subframe, support the engine, so we could take this arm out. we're out oh that took a while let me tell you this is not an easy task to get this can out crazy how tight the space is inside over there but finally we're out so and this thing is hairy as you can see now we have a nice and uh an empty space over there take a look at the turbo right in there so we have plenty of room to work on now so i had to take out the bottom of the motor mount uh, that was probably not seen in the time lapse 
because it would not clear and this is about how much space you need to drop the subframe by i actually this was i, I was trying to do use a pry bar but it was it kept slipping so i came out with this rod with a nut and then put a plate on top so it doesn't go to the original hole and just tighten the knot as the threads as the knot went down with the threads the space opened up that just cleared just enough um made enough room to clear through this sheet shield right right here so now what we have to do is just prepare everything for the downpipe now look at all this room wow and we could reinstall everything wow this thing this took a while I did not expect this to go this long take a look at this this was exhausting especially when you're working uh and uh, limited space so look at the the dpf uh, next to the uh to the downpipe i gotta put the new new gasket gasket on the on the downpipe and um we're gonna mark everything up and bolt it right up so the downpipe is installed as you could tell the fit is spot on actually this is the bracket i was talking about before uh, from the original you could tell from the original dpf that's hard to get to as you could see right there um but i uh, managed there's two torques and i believe it's a 10 millimeter it pipe up the down pipe fits just perfect everything bolts up just like stock already uh, mounted the uh, motor mount arm and the motor mount so everything is in i'm still waiting on the midsection that is this pipe right here that we're gonna be installing right here all right so uh went out to the local muffler shop and this is what i uh, came up with i got a piece of straight pipe I, they just bend it to the shape of the uh of the original pipe with the scr and my original plan was to um at the end of this since this is a three inch pipe uh to use a uh, reduction from three to two and a quarter two and three quarters because the original pipe is uh two and three quarters but the what i found out is that this pipe um it fits over it's so thick that it, you could slide it over the original pipe and there's no space in it so i'm gonna try this method first if there if i get no leaks I was just going to leave it th this way. So what I did is I cut some slats, four slats around for the clamp to clamp it real real good and see if that will work. If if that will work, then uh there's no point of doing this reduction that just more work, you know, I have to cut it, then you need more clamps. I could weld it, but I want it to be uh, you know, reversible. Uh, if I need to take it off, I want it to be easy access. So I think that that's the best way to do it. So uh, let me test fit it and see if that will work with this clamp. So I was making the, the slots a little wider since I have to compress the pipe quite a bit. And I want to make them lo longer than the clamp itself because then it will, will leak. So... I'm just testing it out and see how this idea goes if it goes well then hey save some uh, extra work for me if not then i'll just do what i was originally planning to do let's test fit it as you saw it's a very tight fit so i think it should be fine and will be clamping strong enough uh, there shouldn't be any leaks but uh, you never know so uh, before i i bank on it let me just test fit it otherwise the pipe looks good everything clears there's no obstructions here everything clears there's there's apple room over here there should be any vibrations everything clears so let me just tuck those things in because we will not be using those anymore these temperature sensors will have to hide them somewhere i'm not gonna clamp it just yet for good because my clamp broke which was supposed to go here so i'm just waiting for another clamp to come in 
they didn't have it in my local store and then I'll, I'll clamp everything down should be nice and, and ready for for the for tune uh, we'll be complete with the mechanical part with the hardware part of it now we just need to upload a tune for this uh for this for all this to uh, to work all right boys uh we have our pipe marked up my second clam has arrived right here so everything is ready to for the final installation uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna on this end I'm and on the front as well I'm gonna use this uh, copper RTV it's it's made for exhaust it's high temperature so I'm gonna put a nice bead inside so there's a nice seal I put extra few notches in there so this uh, the pipe gets nicely cramped so hopefully there's no leaks I'm hoping for this will work out nicely so that way I won't have to use the reduction and uh, the, the front end is pretty straightforward the clamp will just clamp it and I use the RTV as well so uh, let's get under the car and uh, start assembling this part So this is it the final product it's tightened up over there and it's tightened over here at this end it looks just as it should nice and stout no movement pipe is tight and it's, i don't know if you could tell see the gasket uh, came out here on the on the type spaces so it's curing nicely I actually heated this up a little bit so it's nice and hot so we should not have any leaks without further ado now it's time to fire so let's fire it up and uh, see how she sounds This is the idol. Sounds like a true diesel. Let it idle for a couple minutes. So um so it gets nice and warmed. But so far so good. I don't see no leaks. So hopefully this will uh this will be good. I am excited. Woo! Thank you. 